Circuit Television, otherwise known as CCTV, is everywhere these days. Technically, it is the use of video cameras to transmit a signal to a specific place on a limited set of monitors. These systems include indoor cameras, outdoor cameras, dome cameras, bullet cameras, cameras with night vision abilities, wide angle, pan tilt zoom cameras, IP cameras, pretty much anything you want to monitor at any time, anywhere, there is a camera that will do it. These cameras connect to a DVR that records the data. This data is then transmitted to a monitor or a group of monitors and can be accessed remotely through the internet or even a smartphone. This data can also be backed up on a USB external drive or a CD-ROM. CCTV was developed in Germany by Walter Brunch in the early 1940s. It was then used by the U.S. military in the testing of the V-2 missile. Officials were able to monitor the testing at close range without danger, watching out for defects and other problems that might have otherwise gone undetected. By the mid-1960s, CCTV was being used in a few European cities to monitor public places such as train stations and city centers. In the 1970s, governmental and financial institutions worldwide began using CCTV in crime prevention. By the mid-1980s, the outdoor camera technology improved dramatically with the advancement of heaters and fans to reduce condensation and foggy lenses. During this time, the industry developed the pan and tilt features of the cameras, or what is known as PTZ cameras. Busted. During the late 1990s, infrared technology was developed, which allowed cameras to be placed in police cars, traffic lights, and almost every public building in the country. After 9-11, the industry exploded with sales on systems with infrared and high-resolution lenses. New equipment was developed that were more vandal-proof and more advanced with facial and license plate recognition. CCTV is used currently on our roadways. They help to monitor congestion and accidents by notifying the authorities when the average speed drops below a preset threshold or if the number of vehicles passing within a time period is above a certain threshold. It is also used in counting traffic and tracking vehicles. CCTV is also being used in war. Yes, sir. The mosque. Uh, do not engage the mosque. Roger. Out. One of the vehicles is moving right now. Yeah, you are clear to engage it. Right there. Hey, hey, ready. Good shot. Direct secondaries. People running to the west. Vehicle clean. More okay. movers. Yeah, another vehicle and uh, more people clear to engage all those. Copy. CCTV is being used for training and educational purposes. A local marriage and family therapy group uses CCTV in their training rooms to help new practitioners refine their skills. Postgraduates and postmasters or postdoctorate students come here um, to get their certificate in marriage and family therapy. Mm -hmm. Students record videotapes of their sessions and then take them to their supervisor so their supervisor can actually see the session. It also helps us because scheduling is always a problem here. We have a lot of therapists and not a lot of rooms and we keep a calendar but it also helps um, you know to see that oh someone is in there right now and then we won't walk in on a session and disturb it. I think everyone is pretty comfortable with the equipment and I think that's a big draw. We really take pride in is our live supervision. Hi, um, the Center of Excellence for Simulation and Education, which is located inside University of British Columbia here in Vancouver, Canada, um, we do use CCTV for different purposes. And uh, one of the purposes that we use is for security of our center. We have one at the front door, we have in the back door, so we do monitor who is coming in and after hours and before hours. Um, so. 
that's one of the reasons we use and uh, that, that's a good help so we, uh, we can always access to those videos based on the time and uh, date that they uh, are being recorded. And the other purpose that we use uh, CCTV uh, cameras and systems are, uh, we call it debriefing systems. The way that we use these systems are that we do uh, have them into the rooms and um, th that our students and uh, nurses and uh, allied professionals, they come in and practice on our s simulator, which are mannequins, very sophisticated mannequins. Uh, so these systems uh, ties up and records the view of the room, uh, also the audio and communications of the room that's happening and the scenario, plus also the vital signs of the patients. Uh, so once the instructor is done, uh, with the scenario, um, they can go to a different room and their students get debriefed. Also during the scenario, these systems are uh, allowing the instructor to be bookmarked and based on the event that's happening in the room. Uh, once they go to a debriefing room, uh, this, all the videos are recorded and stored in the server and they can be through the network accessed and the instructor will play back the video and debrief the students. And as we all know, debriefing is a major part and a very important part of any scenarios or any uh, uh, education um, uh, scenarios that we run in our center. Uh, so um, uh, w w how it helps, it also helps the instructor um, to go and uh, uh, look back uh, at the action of the students that happened and also uh, debrief the students based on their communications, teamwork, uh, and um, so that will help uh, the students to go further and practice and uh, come back prepared. Uh, so that's all how we use the CCTV. Uh, despite we call it debriefing system, still it's going to be the same concept uh, as I discussed early. In the 1990s, retail and convenience stores started to take advantage of what CCTV could provide them, mostly related to the surveillance of crime. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? When you were eight and you had bad dreams. Today, however, CCTV is being used to monitor employees, inventory, and quality. It also provides freedom and peace of mind. What it's like to kind of monitor what's going on in both stores? Well, I carry my laptop and uh, I use it uh, here to watch the other store and vice versa. And then I also have the software in my desktop at home. Oh, great. Big, I have managers on the store, so I'm away and they do call me. I get a no. visual. Um, I can actually see what's going on on the platform. So I can send a snow removal company to take care of it. This has a really practical use and... Uh, Actually, PUS integration uh, really helps me out to uh, follow up all the error that uh, uh, my employee, they do over the register. So it saves me a lot of energy and time to go back and see this 7-Eleven system because it's kind of time consuming for me. But using this system really helps me out to get it done in a very few seconds actually so it's a very efficient system the CCTV is you that we have here is used to monitor quality control of our right production plan which is fine and works in a laboratory but then when you put it on a production floor employees have to follow everything exactly as the engineers describe and a lot of times they'll alter it because oh it's easier to do to do it this way maybe easier for them to do it a certain way but cameras really help us ensure quality What is the trade-off with all of this technology for this control, efficiency, and convenience? Obviously, it's our privacy. Do we also get a false sense of security? And is it worth it?